Sports Channel. In this video I'm going to explain how the TBI injection works. In my previous video I explained how the multi-port field injection works. The TBI injection is similar but it has slight variations. So I'm going to go ahead and explain it. That way you can understand the two and you can troubleshoot either one of the two systems with no problem. Same as the previous video, I'm going to focus on the mechanical part of it, which is the fuel delivery. We will be focusing on the operation of the sensors that will affect any of the two systems in upcoming videos. But for today's video, I'm going to go ahead and explain the mechanical side of the TVI injection. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera up close so you can see the components and understand their operation. Okay, so on the throttle body injection system, the fuel injectors will be found in the throttle body itself. Uh, this is a General Motors throttle body unit and it has two injectors. Most systems will have two injectors because there's not a lot of room to put more and they're side by side just like this. And the fuel pressure regulator is in the unit itself. In this particular throttle body unit the regulator is here which there's a diaphragm and a spring in here. For the fuel delivery is similar to the multi-port fuel injection. A fuel pump module is going to have a fuel pump strainer that filters the impurities from the tank. As the pump is energized, fuel travels through the supply line, it exits the fuel pump module, enters the filter, and it travels and it goes to the throttle body unit. When you turn the ignition on, the engine control computer will send power to the fuel pump relay for a few seconds and the relay will energize the fuel pump for those few seconds to pressurize the system and then when you start your car the system has enough pressure to operate. To break it into more detail some of the things that apply to the multi-port fuel injection system will apply to the throttle body unit which one of them is the engine control computer itself will not send direct current to the fuel pump. On a relay how this works is you have a wire that goes from the relay to the main fuse box panel that will have enough amperage to operate the pump and there's another wire that is going to be going to the pump itself through the harness okay. there's going to be a ground obviously there's going to be a signal wire that is a smaller diameter wire that is going to be going to the computer so this small wire that goes from the ECM to the relay it activates it when it receives the signal from the ignition system so like I said turn the key on it will activate a few seconds and obviously when you start it it will remain activated so what the relay does it just enables the current that is coming from the main fuse box with the larger fuse to travel through and power the pump so now that we understand that part so we started the car, computer sent the signal to the relay the 12 volts passed through from the main fuse box all the way to the pump through its wiring harness which you know the power comes all the way down to the pump itself you can see it okay so now the pump is operating you know it's obviously setting up right and you got the fuel you know whether it's half tank, full tank, whichever so it's drawing fuel from the tank and is sending it through the supply line. The fuel is traveling, it's going through the filter and it's going to enter the throttle body through the supply line. So as the fuel enters, when the computer activates the injector, which is an on and off signal that is happening in milliseconds by the way, uh, the injectors are always, you can hear them click. So as the computer activates, like I said, the injectors, it turns them on and off really, really fast. The advantage of a throttle body unit is that you can actually see the injector spraying. It looks there, it's a really cool mist that almost looks like an umbrella as the fuel is injected and it's coming out of the injectors. Being able to see the fuel being injected is actually a cool thing because it enables a person to see if there are any uneven patterns or if instead of being a nice umbrella mist is more of a stream which it would indicate 
a clog injector or maybe it's not spraying at all so that would be one of the advantages of the throttle body versus the multi-port that you can't really see the fuel coming out troubleshooting a fuel pressure issue with the throttle body unit is slightly different okay on a general motors vehicles there's this adapter you know this one's made by Mac tools but many other companies make it uh, there is really no test port so to speak so this particular one is actually very cool you remove the fuel filter on the general motors it threads the fuel filter just threads on on both sides so you so you disconnect it you remove the filter you thread this adapter instead of the filter itself because it wouldn't look like this it would be threaded on both ends so this once this is in place and the supply line is going straight through then you can connect your fuel pressure gauge to the adapter like that and that's how you would be able to test the fuel pressure on the General Motors there are vehicles that obviously won't have threaded filters like this and depending on what kind of fuel pressure tester you may have there are some that will come with the hoses that you can disconnect and put an adapter in place same thing for the fuel pressure gauge or some of them uh, for the throttle body unit you can disconnect one of the lines you put the adapter in between it and same thing you connect the gauge so there are different things to do it and like I said this is for General Motors I'll just leave it right here now here's the difference with the throttle body unit versus the multi-port fuel injection system Throttle body unit operates in a lot lower pressure. It's usually somewhere between 12 to 15 pounds. That's usually what it needs. And similar as a multi-port, the fuel pump will put out a little bit more, maybe 25, 30 pounds, uh, just to make sure that there's enough. And the regulator, which is inside here, is the one that will keep the constant pressure. So, same as the multi-port, in order to be able to diagnose a regulator issue versus a weak pump, you look at your rubber return line that's going back to the tank. You use a towel in between, you pinch the return line, and you're, you're not allowing fuel to go back to the tank. So at that point, with your gauge, you would be able to know, you know, connected to the adapter, you would be able to know if, in fact, the fuel pump is weak or the regulator diaphragm might be ruptured and it's not keeping the pressure anymore. So obviously, if once you pinch the line, the fuel pressure goes above 15 pounds, you know, let's say 20, then you know the regulator is the problem. If you pinch the line and the fuel pressure doesn't go up, you know, still at 9 or 8 or, or some low number, then you know that your pump is weak and it needs to be replaced. Replacing the regulator is simple. You know, you usually unscrew the top part and the regulator is always going to be is just the diaphragm and the spring. All you have to do is just pay attention to how it comes out and then put it back together the same way. So it's still fairly simple to replace. Just a reminder, we're focusing on the mechanical part of it. There will be other factors that will affect the pattern of the injectors, how much fuel is going to be required to be injected as you accelerate or decelerate. But right now we're not going to focus on that to keep the video short and make it easy to understand. Last but not least, in your fuel pump module, you're going to find your fuel tank sending unit, okay, which is this one. It's a rheostat. The resistance changes as the arm goes up or down. Obviously, as you can imagine, when the arm is down, your, your needle on your dashboard is going to show that it's on E. And as you put gas in and the flow starts rising and the level goes up, then your needle is going to show a different reading, you know, whether it's full, half, three quarter, whichever. All vehicles, the signal used to go directly to the gauge. Newer vehicles, signal goes to the computer. Computer sends the signal to your dashboard so you can see how much fuel is in your gas tank. So if the fuel gauge in your dashboard is not working, you could have a couple issues. You could have a float that is full, you know, it may have a hole and it's all the way to the bottom so when you fill it up with fuel it never goes up 
that's a possibility. Maybe the unit itself is damaged. So this is the part that goes in the tank that would affect your fill tank, your fill gauge. So if you didn't know that, now you know. So like I said earlier, this video is focusing on the delivery part of the fuel and we'll focus on other areas on upcoming videos that affect either the throttle body injection or the multi-port fuel injection. So now you know how the mechanical part of the TBI injection works. Understanding this will enable you to troubleshoot problems related to the fuel delivery and like I said, in upcoming videos I'm going to go ahead and explain how the operation of the other sensors affect how much fuel is injected by the injectors to the engine. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.